Zain, you are in an industry and a space uh, that all of us are familiar with at some point or the other. I'm sure all of us have ordered pizza, right? Is there anyone here who hasn't perhaps ever ordered a pizza or eaten a pizza? Can I see a show of hands? So one hand going up? No. I think he's just waving at some. One person, okay. So you perhaps, your job is cut out. You're going to have to maybe convince him that eating a pizza is not all that bad. But Zain, what can you tell us about your business? Hello, everyone. My name is Zain. Um, I run US Pizza, which is also called United Restaurants Limited. We have been a company that's been around for quite a while, about two decades now. We are a country of steady growth in a country of steady growth. We have 85 outlets across India right now and are officially the third largest pizza brand. Although we are far away behind our industry leaders, we are definitely getting there, slowly and steadily. Zain, you are in an industry and a space uh, that all of us are familiar with at some point or the other. I'm sure all of us have ordered pizza, right? Is there anyone here who hasn't perhaps ever ordered a pizza or eaten a pizza? Can I see a show of hands? So one hand going up? No. I think he's just waving at some. One person, okay. So you perhaps, your job is cut out. You're going to have to maybe convince him that eating a pizza is not all that bad. But Zain, what can you tell us about your business? Hello, everyone. My name is Zain. Um, I run US Pizza, which is also called United Restaurants Limited. We have been a company that's been around for quite a while, about two decades now. We are a country of steady growth in a country of steady growth. We have 85 outlets across India right now and are officially the third largest pizza brand. Although we are far away behind our industry leaders, we are definitely getting there, slowly and steadily. To you, Zain, you are representing a market that is also slightly you know, young, more, um, and is looking at experimenting, is okay eating out. What about this market is interesting and attracting so much of investment and talent? The thing about the restaurant industry yeah. is that, in my opinion, it is the most competitive industry out there, only because there are very low barriers to entry. The investment is not high. Most people know about food, and most people think they can add to the food market as a whole. Um, what we have in Bangalore specifically is a lot of people moving out from their regular industries and trying out what they think is the food that they could contribute to the rest of the city, to the world. And inevitably, if they do well at one, it becomes a phenomenon. They grow, usually through franchising, which is my recommended path. But um, no, it is the entrepreneurial spirit, it's the courage, and it translates from every industry. For those of you who don't know, 80% of Zane's outlets are outside of metros, and that's really the market. And I was quite surprised to learn that myself. A lot of youngsters have taken on to the food industry and have brilliant ideas and launched so many different kind of foods, uh, chains, concepts. But as all of you know, most of them have failed. And uh, so that is one area of concern. The second is most of these people, youngsters who start, always target the very, 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 very small h &I industry. Their prices are prohibitive, and they seem to uh, always position themselves as you know, right at the top, which is a great positioning. If there weren't, if there were a lot of people with a lot of money, yes, but India is predominantly still not a rich country. And maybe that's the reason why they fail. So as three successful entrepreneurs, maybe you have some guidance for these uh, food wannabes uh, on how to better choose the direction in, if they wanted to get into the food, and then how to position themselves properly so they have a higher chance of success. That is really what I wanted to ask. Okay. Thank you. Which are these businesses that are? Let me you? answer this. Sure. Absolutely. So it's a great question. And I think, um, you know, this whole, this whole show is about entrepreneurship and um, people going out on their own. And as a society and a, and a country, we celebrate that. We celebrate the courage to do things on your own, to break the mold. But um, what exactly like you said, these are very risky, risky propositions. I mean, sometimes you're leaving a, a job for it. Sometimes you're putting your entire net worth on a, a proposition like this. And what I would say is that going out on your own like, like, th like that is like learning carpentry and building your own furniture. And what I would say is rather than that, go to an IKEA and let your creative process end there 
and then just follow the instructions and do the hard work necessary. And that's what I would say is franchising, what we do. We create the right business model, and we ask someone to partner with us to see it through, to execute on that. And that's what I would say to you. And I would like to congrat congratulate all three of you for the success that you have attained in a very, very competitive industry. And I've, I've been very curious. I mean, I've seen the growth. Everybody has seen the growth, the expon exponential growth in the food delivery platforms. So my question is, I've always wondered, how do you balance, for example, the pizza? You know, you, you have dine-in as well as delivery. How do you balance the cost? Is it more expensive to have a customer dine-in at the restaurant, or is it more expensive to have it delivered at home? How do you balance? Is, it, is there a difference in the pricing model? How do you balance that in, you know, going forward? And I find that new entrepreneurs are using cloud kitchens. So how do you compete against them? Because they don't have a front, you know? So no restaurant, no overheads. So how do you do that? And how do you see the evolving landscape going forward because the competition is only going to grow tougher. You've actually summed up the last five years of the restaurant industry in one question, so congratulations. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit technical. It's really, it's just a little, it's really simple if I put it this way. You're a break-even in a dine-in restaurant. You're going to be spending about 15% on rent at your break-even. Your minimum you're going to be spending on Swiggy and Zomato as a cloud kitchen or any brand is going to be 21%. And that's if you're big. That's if you actually have some scale. Um, the, the mathematics don't, are not equal. They're not. Which is why I will always prioritize the dine-in experience of, of a customer over delivery experience of a customer. Or I will always demand a little bit extra in terms of money from a delivery customer just because of the economics of the situation. And I encourage everyone to go back to dining how do you really view digital and digital transformation? At, if you can talk about your business and also talk about just how perhaps, you, you know, maybe some of your peers, smaller businesses in the hospitality space are transforming and changing using the power of tech. I think um, the one effect that cannot be understated that has been going on since 2014 uh, has been the impact of uh, online delivery portals, which um, have tripled, quadrupled the size of the industry by itself. Um, which is great, which is, I mean, it's brought so many more people into the industry who would otherwise be, you know, slaving away at their regular job, not following their passion. However, there hasn't been much profit in that uh, quadrupling of size. Uh, I mean, just that by itself tells you the whole story you need to know about where we are in food, in restaurants, almost a stalemate where we're growing, but no one's making money off of the passion projects, they're phenomenal ideas, even companies that are doing extraordinarily well, you will find they are still struggling on the brink. Probably Zane, you know, we had an interesting conversation offline and you were talking about why for you word of mouth is just so much more important. I was asking about branding and marketing and you said for you word of mouth is more important than perhaps doing advertisements, spends, etc. It's not good for my industry, but why is that a strategy? What is your advice based on your strategy for an entrepreneur who's here? What I was referring to when we had this conversation, we had just spoken about how Domino's, when they came in, uh, sank about 75 crores plus, and we're talking about 1998, um, on just brand awareness. Um, those kind of figures were unheard of at that time, especially f in food. And um, I was telling Sunanda that um, what I would like to see, and uh, what my marketing is based around now, is a uh, balance between brand awareness and word of mouth marketing. And you'll see word of mouth marketing be successful for brands such as, I mean, I don't know if you guys know Rameshwaram or any of the big dosa brands. It's all about just someone else's feedback to you, because you will always trust that more than what the radio, the TV, or the YouTube ad says, always. There's, there's never, or influencer for that matter. Um, so, but it is a low probability, high reward event to have that happen to you. To have, and to have everyone say it at the same time, you need to have good product, every product, you have to have good service every time. You cannot fail the customer even one time. And that's what I base my business around and the business model of every outlet on. 